Hello and welcome to CMC Markets on Tuesday the 26th of April and the weekly market update. Now this week I'm going to talk about a technical analysis indicator, the Golden Cross. Now a Golden Cross is essentially when the 50-day moving average crosses above the 200-day moving average and typically it's seen as a very bullish indicator. It doesn't always work however and I'm going to be talking about it in the context of the S&P 500 because there's been an awful lot of commentary over the past few days that the Golden Cross on the US S&P 500 could well be an arbiter of further stock market strength and potentially a little bit of dollar weakness because there's probably only one way that we're going to see a move higher in equity markets and that is if the Fed that if the Fed meeting tomorrow, Wednesday, comes out in any way near dovish. Now, we will be hosting a webinar, a preview webinar, with respect to that Fed meeting tomorrow at 3 p.m. And uh, the sign-up can be found on the CMC Markets website. Digressing a little bit, let's get on to the subject of the Golden Cross, because I think it's particularly important that when people see this pattern or event happening that they act in the right way and ultimately if you'd acted upon a gold, this golden cross in December you would, have, you would have lost money. It was a false signal and I think part of what I'm hoping to show you today is when to be cautious about this indicator and also to, to understand why this indicator has worked in the past. So we're going to make a start with a very long term Bloomberg daily chart. And on this chart that I've got in front of me right now, we've got a simple line chart since 2011, and it's got a 50-day and a 200-day moving average on it. Now, we can see at the very beginning of the chart, just around about the beginning of 2012, we can see the 50-day moving average crossing above the 200-day moving average. And the 200-day moving average, which is the green line, appears fairly flat but it is starting to move higher, whereas the faster moving line, the 50-day moving average, is starting to accelerate higher. If we now move forward a little bit further and look at our next chart, we can see that from this chart there is a significant difference in the gradient of the moving averages. So this particular chart gives us a slightly more detailed picture and it also gives us uh, a fairly good idea of why the golden cross that we saw at the end of last year failed. So looking at this candle chart, we can see by linking the highs between November and December and at the end of December, the rally that we saw in the middle of December or the choppy nature of the range trading that we saw in December caused the 50-day moving average to cross above the 200-day moving average. But look at the 200-day moving average, it's the blue line. It's sloping downwards. Therefore, long-term momentum is still predominantly negative. And as such, that makes it much more difficult to get the, the type of explosive upward movement that we would need to suggest that we're going to get a further move higher. We would also need to see a break through the December highs to suggest that we are going to carry on the move or confirm the move in the positive movement of the 50-day moving average above the 200-day moving average. Ultimately, with moving averages, you need confirmation. An indicator, a moving average indicator, all on its own, is not a significant indicator of a trend change. You need a whole host of other things to happen first. And in December, we didn't get this. We didn't get a break of a previous high, and we didn't get a break of a trend line resistance. Moving on further over to what we have got here in April, again, we've got this Golden Cross. Now, will this Golden Cross be any more successful than the one in December, or will it be as successful as the one that we saw in 2012? Quite simply, we don't know, but what I can tell you is we haven't broken above the November and December highs, and that makes me cautious about it. There's also the fact that the 200-day moving average is still declining ever so slightly. So that does suggest to me that we still need a great deal more confirmation for this golden cross to suggest that we're going to get a move or a significant move higher in the S&P 500. So to reinforce what I was saying 
with the previous chart, we're going to look at this Bloomberg chart and how we got the break higher in the Golden Cross in 2012. And as we can see from this chart, on the analysis that I've drawn on this particular breakout, we had a break of a trend line from the 2011 highs. We had a clearly defined uptrend coming in from the lows that we saw in 2012, 2011, 2012. And we also got subsequently the Golden Cross crossover in the wake of the break above the highs that we saw in the middle of October 2011. So we got a trifecta of events take place along with the Golden Cross that suggested that we were going to go and push higher. And ultimately that's what you need. The Golden Cross all by itself is not sufficient for a trader to draw the conclusion that the market is going to suddenly spike higher. Okay, so to finish up, we are going to look at a cable chart. Now this is a chart that I looked at a few weeks ago. I talked about the inverse head and shoulders. I talked about the left and right shoulders around about 140 and a half, 140, 80. We've managed to hold above that. We've now broken above the neckline that came in around about 144. We've broken above the 100 day moving average at 144.50. That does appear to suggest that we could well see further gains in cable now towards 147 and 148 over the course of the next few days and weeks. So that's it for this week. Um, just a quick uh, recap about the Wednesday pre-FOMC webinar at 3 p.m. You can sign up to that on the website. Otherwise, thanks very much for listening. This is Michael Houston talking to you from CMC Markets.